so inspired by Maxim and all the other speakers today and everyone I've met here so far. Networking and schmoozing is such a crucial part of our work. I thought long about how I can be most productive and impactful today. What I have learned from my own experiences, pain, humiliations, and many, many failures. And how to spare you pain, humiliations, and failures although they cannot be avoided completely, to be honest. So I decided to humbly distill 30 plus years of professional entertainment earning and experience into 15 minutes for you. Bottom line, creative success advice and creative entrepreneurship advice. So take out your pens and write. There's a lot of meat coming. It is inspired by my book, Beyond the Craft, What You Need to Know to Make a Living Creatively which is now in its second edition. I created my own strategy, philosophy, and even vocabulary based on those habits, qualities, and commonalities that successful creatives share and is intended to empower you to reach the next level of your creative career without solely relying on others, agents, managers, and other gatekeepers, casting directors, art gallery owners, producers, etc. I'm simply trying to save you years you must learn to make things happen on your own. Those who are most innovative will be rewarded. Learn AI as much as you can. Don't be AI-phobic. Eventually, it will become an amazing tool for us creatives to market and distribute our work and maybe even find financing. Don't ever depend or rely on anyone else for your success or accomplishment. If you have an agent, manager, rep, or producer, and they actually do something, Great, it's a bonus, but don't wait for them. If your actions mimic everyone else's, if you're doing what the rest of the pack is doing, beware. You may not necessarily be on the right track. Come up with your own path, your own solutions, your own strategy, your own destiny. I was an agent at ICM, at the time, International Creative Management, at the time, It was the largest entertainment, literary, and newscasting agency in the world. And I learned a lot there. It was recently uh, bought by CAA. But I witnessed a lot. Of course, there were the talented names, certainly the Meryl Streeps of the world, the creme de la creme of talent. But not all the names or successful clients were that talented. It stunned me at first. What qualities, traits, or habits did they share? Here are some. The most persistent people made it. The most knowledgeable people made it. Learn the business of your craft. Those who have the best networking and schmoozing skills. Those who really know how to bond with people. Schmoozing is a two-way street. You know how they can help you. How can you help them? Learn how to collaborate. Collaboration is key. Every meeting is an opportunity Try to transform every meeting into follow-up action plans. Avoid being dictatorial or dogmatic or controlling. Don't be intimidated by anyone. Without further ado, here are 15 other key factors in achieving creative career success. 15 rules, if you will, of creative entrepreneurship. One, learn how to be bold and aggressive, much more than you think. I met recently with a startup expert who advised some of the household name companies in Silicon Valley. He said that all the teams, when they were starting out, had one person person pushing all the time. Keep on pushing and pushing hard. The boundary of obnoxiousness is much farther than you think. Forget about being proper. So many thousands of creatives fail by trying to be proper. You're not in a nunnery. You're in a very difficult, challenging business, particularly today. Confidence is key. Learn how to assemble a team. If it requires you to be a leader, then be a leader. This is generally too hard to do alone. Be selective. Selectivity is everything. But find and attract compatible partners and co-producers. Let's discuss partnership for a minute. Often the most successful and effective partners between actors and agents, or writers and managers, or actors and directors, or writers and directors, etc., are those where partners rise or succeed at the same time. 
They rise as you do and vice versa. They succeed in more or less the same time frame as you, and often at a similar pace. This is the natural order of things in the creative world. Fantasizing about Oscar or Emmy or Tony winners who will be your partners is just that, a fantasy. Try to ascertain the hunger and priority of your co-producers or partners. You should rely on someone who is as hungry as you are to succeed. Do they have the same priority and hunger that you do? Are the stakes for them just as high as they are for you? If you're a writer, director, or producer, learn how to, to use your life or your family's life to create your own projects. It doesn't have to be strictly autobiographical. There are so many examples of this. Damon Chazelle, the director of La La Land, his first film was Whiplast, based on an actual abusive band leader he experienced in college. Ted Melfi, whose film St. Saint Vincent starred the great Bill Murray, he actually grew up next to a functional alcoholic. David Seidler, who won an Oscar at the age of 73, the King's Speech. His father was a speech tutor to King George. So use what you know. When I first started in show business, I had to go to the Library of Performing Arts and spent, put in dimes and quarters in the Xerox machine and make copies of these very expensive directories. You don't have to do that now. Become an Olympic researcher. Now you can find almost everything on the web. You can research almost everyone. AI, Google, IMDB, LinkedIn. Resourcefulness is an amazing advantage. The business is very stratified. You must research and locate the right people for you and your project and your craft. Persistence. The ability to pick yourself up when life or the creative business throws you a curveball, which it will. The ability to not quit when the going gets tough. The strength to not take no for an answer. The ability to find your way around a brick wall and instead of getting your forehead bloody, find a way around it. My first feature film is Passionata. It's a street romance. See it. It's on Amazon Prime. I had to do 529 meetings. London, LA, New York, Miami, Istanbul, Berlin, Paris. I'm not saying you have to do 529 meetings to make your project happen, but probably five or ten times more people you need to meet than you think. So maximize your contacts. It's a numbers game. One other thing. Successful creative professionals are problem solvers, not problem analysts. You take action and get to the next step. Efficiency. When you work, you work hard. Play as much as you want. I've been to 90 countries, lived in five of them, going to Norway and Ireland next week. I'm a strong believer in four to eight weeks of vacation or more a year, of taking time off of resting and reflecting, which is so important for artists and creative people. But when you sit down to work, don't web serve for email with friends. Don't interrupt the long flowing conversations. Work already. The close second cousin, discipline. The most successful creative entrepreneurs are very disciplined people. You need to make the time each week to practice your craft. Make the time each week to network. It's that important. That is four things. Researching potential contacts, reaching out to them, and contacting them. Arranging a Zoom call, or better yet, meeting people eyeball to eyeball. And this tsunami of AI, tech and data, texting, emailing, or SMing is not a replacement. They will not nearly help you as much, and we all need help. Next, take the time to think. That's right, think. Just think. In the bathtub, in the woods, in the garage, wherever you have to go. Then that day, write down the actions you're going to take as a result of your thinking session. So many successful creative entrepreneurs have this habit. And a corollary, silence. When you are thinking or writing or creating, turn off everything. No text, no emails, no phone rings. This smartphone, it turns off. Practice with this feature. Next, flexibility. Be flexible. It may not happen as you expect it to. 
You may be pursuing the wrong creative career or medium. For example, you're a screenwriter who should be a playwright or telewriter. You, or a telewriter who should be a novelist. Or a novelist who, sh who should be a nonfiction or self-help author. You're a painter who should be a sculptor. A backup musician who should be a singer-songwriter. You get the picture. You're an actor that should be a director. Or you're a director that should be a writer. Be flexible. Close second cousin, even with the right career or right medium, you could be involved in the wrong genre. If you want to turn your hobby or avocation to a paid vacation, do what you're best at compared to your peers. Not simply the genre that you aspire to or you like the most. Learn how to ask for favors. That's right, the time for this is now. Forget about your fantasized image or notion of success. Everyone you see in talk shows, acting distant or aloof, believe you me, these stars, and I represented a lot of stars, these stars, when they started their careers, they reached out every, to everyone they know for help. You make sure you do the same. Now, high-powered contacts and connections don't gain interest like, savings, like a savings account. They may leave their business or worse. Self-sabotage. Identify and destroy all your self-sabotaging habits. You may be your own worst enemy. You probably sabotage yourself in various ways. We creators are, creatives are quite skilled at this as well. Procrastination. Excessive ADD or ADHD. Laziness. Seclusion of ignorance. Terrible promotional materials or social media presence. Being overcome with our fears, not transforming our fears into energy and action, not making use of an expert or someone who's been to the circus you want to go to before, someone more successful and experienced, a mentor who can guide us, a script analyst, entertainment consultant, acting coach. Perfectionism is also an enemy. Give birth to your projects and go on to the next one. Don't take forever. Life is short. Be open to change. Sometimes our initial decisions are wrong. Be as decisive as you can, but don't be afraid to change. Our business and economy is changing rapidly, as many of you know. The AI revolution. Anyone who pretends they got it down is bullshitting. Be open to change and adapt if you need to. Don't be afraid to change yourself, your goals, and your direction. Sometimes you have to take a leap in the dark and accept on-the-job training. One day I was an assistant at ICM. The next day I came in and my office, my boss's office was empty. I'll date myself. There was a little Rolodex spinning. Even the walls were empty. My president of the company called me to his office. He said, we know you've been making deals. Your boss defected, that was the word he used, defected to the rival agency, William Morris. Do you want the job? I was like, uh, 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 yes, I'll take it. And the next six or seven weeks, I was advising very famous Oscar winners and Emmy winners. I really didn't know what I was doing. But eventually, about six or seven weeks, I filled into the job. So all of us, sometimes you have to take the leap in the dark and accept the on-the-job training. All of us creative professionals have done this. It's like parenting. We're never completely prepared. Go for it. Next, learn the business. Sounds simple, but many creative professionals fail because not only are they going after the wrong career goals, but also they don't fully understand their business. Once again, you need to figure out what you do best compared to other creative professionals. And then figure out who are your primary contacts, which I define in the book as people who can hire you, represent you, or invest in you. Those are your primary contacts. Figure out who your primary contacts are and meet them. Write down your goals. That's right, write down, it may sound overly organized, but many studies confirm that those who write down their goals will achieve them quicker than those who don't. One month from now five months from now, one year from now, five years from now, 
What are your goals? Write them down. I can be reached at Get Real, R-E-E-L, Get Real, R-E-E-L. I do coaching, consulting for productions, and script analysis and rewrites. I'm also at www.jimgermanic.com. The main thing you must understand, you need to trust yourself, believe in yourself. You deserve it. You have the talent, the power. Don't be insecure ever. If I can do it, you can do it. You have the time and hopefully the energy. Don't put yourself down or sell yourself short. Never be intimidated by anyone. By feel entitled like you're a king or queen and your creative career will explode. Make a difference, pay it forward, try to improve the world. Thanks so much for listening.